The Accidental Prime Minister, Chapter 19, To the End. Joe strode out of Number 10 Downing Street, back towards the microphone that started this whole adventure. This time, his head was held high, plus someone had remembered to leave a box for him to stand on. People of Britain, I've let you down when you needed me the most. I got scared and instead of facing my fears, I was worried that I wasn't good enough and fell into a deep, jelly-related depression. I behaved badly to the people I care about the most and I'm sorry. All I ever wanted to do was to make the world smile, but I realised that isn't possible all the time. Perhaps I try too hard to make everything fun and maybe that's not always possible either. What I do know is that to live in a world with no fun, no laughter and no joy, well, that's no world at all. Kids need time to enjoy being kids, but grown-ups need time to be allowed to act like kids once in a while too. Opening the park again, properly this time, is just the beginning. If you will give me another chance, I promise not to let you down. Tonight on Eyewitness News with Charlie James, Joe Perkins, first year in charge, and what a year it's been. He's gone from a normal schoolboy to the most famous child in the world, to Prime Minister, to the brink of losing it all. And yet here we are, a year on, and Joe is going strong. Tonight we remember what a year it's been. First up, I'd like to welcome a former member of the Anti-Silliness League. The camera switched to a darkened room, with a man sitting in shadow, concealing his identity. Tell me what happened to the Anti-Silliness League. Is it over? Charlie asked. I'd say the movement's completely dead now. I mean, it started with good intentions. Some of us felt uncomfortable having so much fun and then Violetta came along and I guess she seemed to tap into something. Well, we just went along with it and before we knew what was happening, we were chasing down clowns out of town, picketing joke shops, you name it, we were doing it. Looking back now, it's all a bit embarrassing. I'm not sure what came over us, but when we saw Violetta for who she really was, well, things changed for all of us. The way she set Joe up, well, that's not on, is it? And what are you doing now? Charlie asked. I thought maybe if I joined in, I might actually have some fun. It started with dressing up at home, waiting for my wife to go out before slipping on a wig, messing around with a big red nose and big shoes, and before I knew it, I was clowning around. That's when my wife caught me. I thought she'd be angry, but she's been really supportive. She persuaded me to give up my career as an accountant, and now I've joined the circus. Wow, that's quite a story. Thank you, sir. Please, call me chuckles. When the camera cut back to the studio, Charlie was sitting on a sofa with Violetta Crump. Violetta, welcome. Of course, you've also had a busy year heading up the anti silliness League, followed by a short spell in prison. What's next for Violetta Crump? Oh, so lovely to be here, Charlie. I'm so excited about the publication of my memoirs, Enjoying Life. It's all about my road to recovery and finding the real me. I just want to give something back. All profits go to the home for orphaned kittens because for me, it's not about making money. It's about being reborn into this new, happy, fun-loving Violetta you see before you. Violetta cocked her head to one side and smiled. You seem to get out of prison awfully quickly. Why was that? Charlie asked. None of your business, you nosy little... I mean, I've learnt my lesson. I was a model prisoner. I've served my time and now I'm ready to get back to being a productive member of society. Violetta's smile widened. And what are your feelings about Joe Perkins? Charlie asked. Well, I'd like to thank Joe for teaching me a lesson. I can't wait to see him again to get to thank him personally, she said through gritted teeth. If you're watching, Joe, I'm coming to get you. I mean, see you. Yes, I definitely meant see you. The Prime Minister's success continued, said Charlie James, turning back to the camera. In fact, today he's off to celebrate his anniversary in the park where he spends almost every morning. The park. So we're agreed, Mr. President. Both our countries will do what we can to reduce the deficit, asked Joe, smoothing down his hair. Absolutely, Prime Minister. I must say, this is the first summit about fiscal policy, the President said, unbuckling the seatbelt, that I've ever conducted on a roller coaster. It's good, isn't it? What's more, you get a photo as a memento from the booth at the end. 
Joe handed the president the picture of them both upside down on the roller coaster and gave him a high five before seeing him to his limo. <laughs> Joe loved the park in the morning. He wandered over to where his mum was trimming the flower beds. Looking good, mum, he said. Oh, thanks, love. I'm really pleased. You've done a brilliant job with the fairground and free for everyone too. I know when you suggested having a custard boating lake, I was sceptical, but what can I say? You were wrong. I was... I was wrong. You were right. Oh, thanks, Mum. Have you seen AJ? Joe asked. I think he's on the waltzes with Mr Brooks. Joe arrived at the waltzes just as AJ was giving Mr Brooks a lecture. As Education Secretary and your boss, Mr Brooks, I do hope you'll be operating a scream if you want to go faster policy on this ride. I keep trying to tell you, AJ. I'm not a teacher anymore, Mr Brooks yelled. I gave it all up to get away from the likes of you. Wait a sec, AJ said, scratching his head. You gave up teaching and joined the fair to get away from kids? Huh? AJ looked around at the hundreds of children all over the park. Bad choice, Mr B, bad choice. Hey, AJ, Joe yelled. The England captain's just arrived. Do you fancy a kickabout? Yeah, go on then. I was getting bored of annoying Mr Brooks anyway. See you same time tomorrow, Mr B, AJ yelled. Yes, AJ. It's always such fun. <sighs> Mr Brooks sighed. Speaking of fun, where's the new minister of fun? Joe said. Up here, sir, Jenkins yelled. AJ and Joe looked up to watch Jenkins do some impressive loop-the-loops with his jetpack. Nice skills, AJ yelled approvingly. I had a good teacher, Jenkins bellowed. You're welcome. Not you, AJ. Her, Jenkins yelled, pointing further up into the sky. None other than the Queen came thundering past on a jetpack. Who are you talking to, George? Who's George? Joe and AJ said at the same time. I am, Jenkins yelled. Never mind that, the Queen called out. Pass me the catapult, please, George. Jenkins passed her the royal catapult in mid-air. Why? Because there's a pigeon on that bouncy castle, she shouted. Joe, AJ and Jenkins all looked at each other. No! They all shouted. Ready? Aim! The Queen yelled. Twang! And there we have it. We're all done. So let's find a little bit out about the author. We've learned a little bit in lesson, but here's some more. Before becoming a writer and illustrator, Tom spent nine years working as a political cartoonist for the Western Morning News, thinking up silly jokes about even sillier politicians. Then in 2004, Tom took the plunge into illustrating and writing his own books. Since then, he has written and illustrated picture books as well as working on animated TV shows for Disney and the Cartoon Network. The Accidental Prime Minister is his debut children's novel. Tom lives in Devon and his hobbies include drinking tea, looking out of the window and biscuits. His hates include spiders and running out of tea and biscuits. And we're all done. But if you'd like to read some more, there are more books in the series. I'll share a picture of them next. <laughs>